Okay. Um, obviously, uh, a lot better weekend for us. Uh, good to get the win. We uh, should have won. We did win. Played like we're supposed to. Uh, a lot of positive things in that game. Uh, you know, just the score aside, just playing better fundamentals and technique, um, particularly in the front seven on defense. Uh, a lot better gap control, uh, run fits. Everything that was so bad the week one was much improved in week two. Uh, red zone production offensively. I mean, we uh, we did a lot of good things, but but we know we got to keep getting better, and uh, we got a a uh, San Diego State team coming in here that that put one on us last year, and and uh, you know just flat out beat us, and so we've got to be uh, prepared and ready, and I'm, I'm sure our guys will have a great week of practice. Uh, came out of the game healthy for the most part, no season-ending injuries, um, and so uh, you know. Another home game, which our guys really look forward to playing here at Rice Eccles. But uh, a lot of good performances. It was great to see, be able to get the twos uh, extensive work in the second half. In fact, uh, number one offense did not play at all in the second half. The one defense played one series. And so we got the twos. Uh, you know, a lot of those guys got 30 reps, which those are invaluable because you're going to need them at some point uh, to play. And if not, if you're, you're fortunate and you don't need them this year, it will help for next year's uh, you know, those guys that need to play for us next year to have those reps. So so a lot of good things coming out of the game on Saturday. But uh, again, we're, we know that we're not where we need to be. And, and we've got uh, to continue to work and, and uh, get better at uh, pretty much everything we're doing. So questions? Your tight ends dominated like you expected. Mm -hmm. You still want to see more of the lineup? Yeah, I think uh, that's that would, you know, as I said at the onset of the season and, and, and through fall camp, that if the wideouts can become more explosive, then that's really the final uh, stage, I guess, of the, of the offense becoming where we want it to be. Uh, they did make some plays. Money Parks, I was impressed with Money Parks. He ran some really good routes, made some nice catches uh, on Saturday. Devon Bailey still really hasn't gotten untracked, although we had two or three catches uh, Saturday, maybe four, two, three, four, something like that. How many? Three. Right there, four, four times. There we go. Uh, but the tight ends are going to continually be a focal point of our offense because they're so productive. I mean, they, you saw the catches Dalton made, and and Brandt is a terrific player. So, so it's not going to become a situation where the where the tight ends, uh, you know, become secondary because they're they're going to be prominent in the offense because uh, that's, you know, they're good. They're really good players. But, but if the wide receivers can become more of a factor, then that makes us a lot better. So that uh, will be great if that can happen. Second so with the wide receivers, like what, is it just more of a confidence thing? What, where do they need to go in their progression to get there? Get open more and, and demand the ball. You get to demand the ball when you get open. And uh, I'm not saying they're, they're getting gloved up, but, uh, you know, the quarterbacks like to throw to open guys. And so you got to get open. And, and if you want the ball, that's uh, – that's an easy, easy answer. Is get open, you'll get the ball. So when you look at the tape, are they routinely getting separation? At times, at times, not. You know, the tight ends are a tougher matchup right now for people because they're just so, so uh, uh, dominant as tight ends. I'm receiving tight ends. You know, they're good blockers as well. I'm not going. Don't want to paint the picture. They're one trick ponies, but but uh, those guys are often mis, uh, mismatched on uh, safeties and linebackers, and they just are almost impossible to cover for those guys. How did you think Bryson Barnes ran the offense? Thought he did a nice job. <clears throat> Came in and, and ran uh, the offense very efficiently. Uh, it wasn't wide open. It was very narrow selection of plays that we had in the second half because we, you know, we, the game was in hand after that 38-point second quarter. But uh, still wanted to see him throw the ball around a few times. You know, and didn't throw it a ton, but but thought he did a really good job. And then uh, Jaquin and Jackson came in and and uh, got some good reps as well. But uh, overall, uh, I thought Bryson played well. When you evaluate talent from that one week period, especially with different opponents, how do you do that in, against an FCS team? I mean, knowing that you said they did improve. <clears throat> yeah, it's hard uh, to completely get a, a, an accurate gauge where you are because there was a talent disparity or discrepancy. I mean, there's that's. That's fact. I don't think anybody anybody would disagree with that. But uh, just the way we went about things, uh, from a fun, you know, whether you're taking on a a guy from the SEC or a guy from wherever, you know, certain fundamentals and techniques you need to employ. 
and we did a much better job of that on Saturday. When you're scouting San Jose State, you saw that they played Arizona in the first game. You'll play Arizona down the line much later. Mm -hmm. Do you look at them at all? Yeah, you do. Just secondarily, I guess you can say. You, you know, you're focusing on San Diego, obviously, but but anytime you're watching tape of someone that you're going to play, that you know, you notice things, and you know, it's not your focal point, but you're going to make mental notes, and and uh, you know, of course, when you get to that particular game week, you'll watch it all again. But but yeah, there, there's things that uh, you can make note of. What do you see from San Diego State this year? Maybe different from last year? Uh, very similar, more similarities and similarities and differences, particularly schematically. I mean, there's still a shotgun spread attack, got a couple big tight ends that they use a lot, uh, stable of backs, although I th one may be out this week. We'll see. It looked like he had a pretty uh, painful, <laughs> I don't know how significant, but he was in pain uh, when he kind of hit the ground and, and uh, it was either a forearm or an elbow or something. But but uh, anyway, they're they're athletic. Uh, they did lose a couple good old linemen from last year, so they had to replace them. Uh, same scheme on defense. Uh, lost a couple good players there as well. But uh, they do a good job down there. Brady Hoke does a great job with recruiting, and, and uh, they're, uh, you know, we'll have our hands full. Coach, what have you seen from Chris Curry in terms of progression from last season to the season that kind of allowed him to have the performance he did on Saturday? Yeah, Chris played very well. In fact, that was, I guess you could confidently say that was his best game as a Ute. Uh, he's very productive, uh, ran the ball well, um, and he's just uh, a guy that, you know, is someone we have complete faith in and confidence. He's good at blitz pickup. He's, he's good at everything. He catches the ball out of the backfield. He can pick up, pick up blitzes. He uh, runs the ball efficiently. And uh, speaking of running backs, you know, I thought Jalen Glover did a nice job as well and showed some, some signs and some flashes of what, what he can be. And then, uh, you know, Makai Bernard was limited, didn't play a whole lot, or didn't carry the ball a lot, played, you know, plenty of reps, but didn't have a lot of touches. And then Tavion, uh, you know, we had big down, or was the fumble, but, you know, just got to keep working that. Did you change up the rotations at all, linebacker? No, we did not. You know, it was still the three guys, Barton, uh, Mahmoud and Kareni uh, Mahmoud couldn't finish the game though he had something that prevented him from finishing the game so that precipitated change but right that's what I was asking oh yeah yeah Mahmoud had to he exited uh, God was it late second quarter I can't remember when he yeah mid to late second quarter maybe it was late first quarter anyway when that happened yeah we had to shuffle the deck a little bit but there was no change prior to that as far as you know our too deep in the linebackers. Using the carries among the running backs differently, given the fact that Tavion fumbled again. You mean allocating them differently, or uh, you know, I would say at this point, no. Tavion is, uh, you know, he's a physical, uh, productive back that you know had a ton of ton of productivity for us last year. You, you know, if it becomes uh, habitual and 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 uh, can't get it corrected, then we'll have to take that measure. But right now, I think we're still just working towards improving his ball security every day in practice. And, and uh, he did go a, a long stretch in the season last year after early problems of securing the ball very well. So we hope to get back to that. San Diego State's one of those teams that a lot of people like to talk about as potentially being an added to the Pac-12 if conference realignment happens. Mm -hmm. You obviously have had a lot of experience playing them. And it's been a decade more now. but. Are they the type of a program that you would want in in, a, in the Pac-12? Do they fit kind of that? You'd have to ask the Pac-12 commissioner and those guys. I, you know, there's so much involved. Uh, you know, the the TV bit market and stadium size. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of things that go into the academics. So I'd be the wrong person to determine whether that was a good fit or not. Can you tell us a little bit about what you thought of Cam Rising's response uh, on Saturday? Obviously, an FCS opponent, but uh, coming off of one of his first. I would say tough moments as, mm -hmm. as the starter, right? The, the final play of Florida. It seemed like he had a lot of poison. I thought he responded outstandingly, and uh, he was his numbers were terrific. Um, you know, he threw for a bunch of yards, high completion percentage. Uh, so I thought, yeah, he 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 came back and and uh, I don't want to say he played poorly in the Florida game, but it wasn't his best game. But he was he was much sharper in this game. Arizona had a lot of success throwing the ball. San Diego State in mm -hmm. the opener. 
there's some similarities in your offense. You can take advantage of maybe some of the stuff you see there. Or oh yeah, very yeah. You, you try to you know look at what other people have had success with and and implement some of the same uh, schemes and philosophies and and uh, see if they've got to correct it. You know that's that's commonplace in football. You see a weakness that somebody's exploited. You're going to test that and see if they've been able to get that fixed or if it's still a weakness for them. So Barton, I think he. He came in early, right? He was here in Springville. Yes. And, and I think he gave up not playing basketball his senior year. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think that that would be necessary for a first-year freshman to come in and start from the very beginning as far as needing to come in early, or can they finish out their senior year and still have that shot? I'd say it's case by case. Some uh, are so talented and so ready for uh, making the jump to that next level that that uh, they wouldn't necessarily need the, the spring ball and the, and the extra semester. But I'm going to tell you, 90% of the players would benefit from that and give them a head start and put them in a much better position to, uh, for playing time in the fall by being here in January and going through spring ball and learning the scheme and being with us all summer than just uh, coming in when they graduate in June. So then how do you feel about that kid giving up a senior or fourth half of the season <clears throat> in high school yeah. and actually playing in Sport. It's give and take, and uh, we tell them it's completely up to them. We lay out the pros and the cons. Uh, you know, there's sacrifice involved, not only athletically, but socially. I mean, they have proms and all kinds of things that, that they give up. Uh, the guys that do come in at mid year, we bend over backwards to try to make it as, uh, I guess you could say, uh, friendly as we can and let them go home for a prom, let them go home for graduation, for a senior trip. I mean, we, we try to, you know, they've done their part to get there early, so we try to do our part and make it uh, less painful for them and, and being able to uh, enjoy the, the high school experience as best they can, given the circumstances. Any updates along the offensive line? Obviously, the five against Trout out against Florida weren't the five that's on the original depth chart. Right. Trout out the same five. Yeah, we made we made that switch, right? Did we publish that? Yeah. Said, okay, so yeah, that's uh, what you saw on Saturday with the first five, and then the second five that played the second half. That is the depth chart, and I think that ref is reflected on the publication. And so, uh, to answer your question, that's the five right now that that uh, or the ten in that you know the first and the second group that uh, going forward we don't plan changing that unless there's you know significant reason you know injury. Uh, significant drop off in play, or someone of the twos, you know, during practice shows that they need to get some reps in the game, something like that. Fun to play in the day. Fun to play in the day. Great to play in the day. Love it. Um, uh, would like that every week if possible. It's not possible. We're going to play the majority of our games at night, so we just go with what the, you know, we play the hand that we're dealt. So. What stands out about last year's game? In terms of particularly kind of the turning point of the season. Besides a miserable experience, it was very miserable. Uh, it obviously stands out when Cam entered the game in the fourth quarter and provided that spark immediately. Uh, poor special teams. You know, we had, uh, I think we had two or three punts blocked. One didn't count because it was a penalty. But, but just it, it just seemed like we were way out of sync in that football game. Uh, we played good defense for the most part. Uh, and then what was a triple overtime? I can't remember two or three overtimes, and so, you know. But it was uh, it was not a good experience, and we just didn't play well. And and uh, but the the uh, you know the after the outcome and, and moving forward, it turned out to be a change in our season because of uh, you know making the quarterback change and and going with Cam the rest of the way, and and ended up being a pretty pretty good year. Kyle, being that this was the game that Cam emerged in last year. Does that make this matchup mean any more different, knowing that your QB1 has unfinished business? Uh, probably not, because the whole team has unfinished business. I mean, we, we, that was a, a, a loss that it was very bitter. And uh, we need to uh, you know, do everything we can to prepare this year to try to have a better showing, because that, uh, that was frustrating. And not taking anything away from San Diego State, they're a good team. I'm not saying that, hey, there's no way that you know, we should ever lose to those guys or anything like that because they're good. But we just didn't play well. Didn't play well. Coach, considering um, that was kind of Camerizing's quote unquote coming out party, you can say, what do you remember last season about Cam at that point of the season that kind of gave you the confidence that after that performance at San Diego State, he could be the starter for the well, season? Well, leading up to that, you know, his attitude was terrific. I mean, it, 
there was he prepared as if he was the starter uh, from the outset, and even though he knew he wasn't when, when we made the announcement. Uh, continued to work hard, watch film, and you know told me, hey, I, you know when my number's called, I'll be ready. I promise you that. And his number was called, and he responded, and, and he absolutely was ready. And and uh, the rest is history, I guess you can say. You know, from that point forward, never looked back. And and of course, uh, Charlie left the program, so th there was no ongoing competition. You know, the job was his once that happened. What do you think of the adjustment to the overtime rules where now you get to the point where it comes down to just one play? Yeah, I'd rather have it be an NFL model. I don't like the college model at all. I think uh, you just, why, why play football one way for 60 minutes and then change it in overtime? You know, just keep playing football and, and uh, in, a, in a normal fashion and uh, go from there. So, so I'm not a fan of the college model at all. But that's what it is, and so you adapt and you and you uh, play towards that end. Is, it, is there any thought that coaches wouldn't like their whole future being decided by one <laughs> play, and they would at least go back to the model? Even if you get rid of punts and kickoffs, you'd at least have a quote unquote drive. Yeah, I mean, you know, they they stopped doing that, so you know, because the games were going too long, I guess. You know, when you have five, six overtimes of and and too many plays adding up for the players and the wear and tear, but. But uh, I think the NFL model is, is great. There's nothing wrong with it. And, and uh, I would much rather play that way than, than this sudden death type of thing. Any other questions? Okay, guys.